Hey guys, today I'll tell you about three YouTubers who, after making videos and getting a following here on YouTube, became criminals and took the lives of several innocent people. These cases will show you that, scary as it may sound, you can never know who people really are. In some cases though, there are red flags that showed something was definitely wrong with them. I mean, these people literally took the lives of their families and others because of their own sick obsessions. So yeah, let's get into it. First off, we have Trey Eric Sessler. He joined YouTube back in 2006, and he eventually became known online as Lens Cat Productions and Mr. Anime. I don't know if you guys know this, but back then, the best way to become a famous YouTuber was to make sketches or comedy videos. Anyway, Trey also tried to do that, but his videos were kind of strange, I guess. Just look at this weird attempt to make a sitcom. You know, you always act like you're real mad at me for some reason. <laughs> you know why I always look like I'm off at you, Trey? Because I am! Yeah, so clearly a strange sense of humor. I don't know if you guys agree, but I think that Trey's content had pretty weird, awkward vibes. It's like he was trying too hard to be funny, and it was very cringy. But hey, not being funny isn't a crime, okay? The real warning sign in Trey's videos is that he featured guns in his videos, like a lot. But there's more, you guys. Apart from sketches, Trey also tried to become famous by filming video games and anime reviews. As time went by, Trey soon started having interests that were kind of concerning. What I mean is that at this point of his YouTube career around 2008, Trey started to become a bit obsessed with famous killers. In the beginning, he was coming from a place of curiosity and not a dangerous perspective, if you will, and he wondered how people were capable of killing others. Just listen to him yourself. It is a little bit disturbing to know that you could be a victim in something like this at these times. I don't know about you guys, but to me, it looks like he's kind of testing the waters, as if he wanted to see people's reactions to the subject. Anyway, this obsession became became even more concerning as time went by, and around 2011, rumors started going around that Trey was doing strange stuff at night, like farming animals and firing his guns at buildings. His viewers also noticed that he was changing, but not in a good way, and many of them pointed out that he had started drinking and mixing pills with liquor. Scariest of all, he was showing his guns more and more in his videos. This change of attitude became even more real and concerning in one of his videos where Trey appeared with an injury on his face, close to his eye, and explains that he can't talk about what happened happened to him. Because of uh, legal and insurance purposes, uh, I cannot disclose what the accident was. So what could have happened to Trey that he wasn't legally allowed to talk about it? Well, some people on his YouTube comments thought that it had been caused by a person attacking him or an animal defending itself while Trey tried to harm him. Suspicious, right? Well, just wait for what comes next. So at the beginning of 2012, after a small break from uploading content, Trey made a video announcing that he had just gotten a full-time job. The good news is that I now found a full-time job in a department that I'm uh, interested in, which is film. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but some people in his comment section noticed that Trey's speech sounds a bit slurred in this video, and his eyes looked tired as if he had been drunk. And that was the last video that Trey ever posted. So what happened to him next? The answer is worse than you can imagine. Only one week after that video, on the morning of March 20th, 2012, Trey took the lives of his mother, father, brother, and even the family pets inside their own home. But if you guys thought that the series of crimes couldn't take a more sinister light, just wait, because it turns out that killing his entire family was not even the main part of Trey's plan. After finishing with everyone in his household, Trey headed to the high school down the street. He was carrying his weapons and had the intention of taking the lives of at least 70 people. But why? Well, as I told you, Trey had carefully studied famous killers and he wanted to become the biggest one in history. Trey, however, didn't make it to the school, thankfully. He had second thoughts and he went back home where he was arrested. When the police interrogated him, Trey said that he couldn't carry out his plan because things have become too real for him when he started seeing the blood of his loved ones. Even though what he did to his family is awful, I'm really glad he had second thoughts about going to the school. This could have turned out even more tragic than it already is. In case anyone was wondering, Trey was sentenced to life in prison. He was 22 years old at the time of his sentencing. So you guys, what do you think of what Trey did? Personally, I believe that his attitude was suspicious from the very beginning and that his obsession with weapons and criminals was a huge red flag. The only thing I'm glad about is that he didn't complete his atrocious plan. But if you guys are enraged by what Trey did to his family, just wait to hear about the next person on this list. 
Let's move on to Anthony Powell. Anthony was a 28-year-old YouTuber, and he was active on the platform from 2007 to 2009. The focus of his channel? Christianity. Or at least that's what he said. The truth is that Anthony's content was solely focused on him angrily spreading hateful messages to atheists. And I mean incredibly hateful. Look at this fu- Uh, how can this person criticize someone else for being angry? Just by taking a look at that video, you can get the sense of what kind of person Anthony was. But as if sending hate to atheists wasn't enough, Anthony also started posting videos that were extremely misogynistic and even crueler to black women. What he said about them was so terrible that I can't even quote it here. The extent of Anthony's hate towards the world was seriously concerning, and it should have been a warning sign for what was about to come. The thing is, Anthony not only posted videos, but he also left very rude and horrible messages on forums and other people's YouTube channels, especially in the ones whose beliefs were different from his. One of those people he harassed was another YouTuber called Asia McGowan. Asia was a student, a dancer, and an actress. Just look at her. She's so full of life. This is just a little dance. I'm freestyling. Freestyling? That's all I'm doing. So Asia posted things like that on her YouTube channel, and she also made it very clear that she was an advocate for women's rights and that she didn't believe in God. Coincidentally, she attended the same community college as Anthony. Can you guys see where this is going? As you may suspect, Anthony didn't like Asia at all. He became obsessed with her and started commenting hateful things on every single thing she posted on YouTube. He did it anonymously, of course, and he created several different accounts that he used to send her hate. But that wasn't even the worst part. Anthony's hatred didn't stay just in the virtual world of his computer. His mental well-being was in decline, so he started having very real thoughts of harming himself and, as we will later find out, others too. He even uploaded videos saying that he had no purpose and that he would take his own life soon. With nothing to lose and having so much hatred towards Asia, the girl who attended the same school as him, Anthony decided to do something truly terrible. On April 10th, 2009, Anthony managed to stay alone in a classroom with Asia at their community college. And guys, I'm sure you already know this, but the outcome of that meeting was not good. The details of the crime are not very clear, but a witness described described seeing Asia as she tried to escape the classroom she was in with Anthony. Sadly, she didn't make it. He fired his shotgun at her and hit her in the back. She tried to yell out for help, but Anthony dragged her back to the classroom where he ended her life. After some students heard the gunshots, the police were called. Upon entering the building, they heard that the gun had fired once more. Anthony had taken his own life and taken Asia with him. Ugh, for real, you guys, this case makes me so sad because I think it could have been totally prevented. Some people reported Anthony's hateful videos to the authorities, but they didn't consider him dangerous. It's so frustrating that they didn't do anything about it when they had the chance and Asia's life could have been saved. Last but not least, we're talking about Jared Lawner. When people who knew Jared saw on the news that he had taken the lives of six people and injured 15 others, nobody was actually surprised. Everyone who lived in Jared's neighborhood knew he was deeply troubled. Some of Jared's neighbors remember that when they were kids and they went out to play, Jared was never allowed to do so. Instead, he always stared at them from inside the house. His family was described as a family of loners. That definitely doesn't sound like a healthy home to grow up in. And at school, things weren't very different. Jared was never the popular type. Even the teachers knew that there was something different about him. Jared was not your normal student. He was just mentally unstable. But Jared did have a small group of friends though, and they got together to talk about music and politics. And Jared had very strong political and religious views. He was also very interested in all sorts of conspiracy theories. And he and his friends believed that the world would end in 2012. Even if he had managed to find people with similar interests to him, even they remember Jared as a troubled person. Around 2016, after his high school girlfriend broke up with him, Jared started using all sorts of illegal substances. I'm sure there's no need to say that he got an even worse reputation than he already had. To make things worse, around this time, Jared tried to join the army, but he was considered unqualified because of his use of substances. Jared supposedly went sober after this. But even after he got sober and joined community college, things didn't look up for Jared, as you guys can guess. He was suspended in 2010 for his disruptive behavior, and then things started to just go down fast. So yeah, Jared's mental illness went on a steady decline. His parents were alarmed, and they even made sure to disable his car every single night to make sure that he wouldn't use it to do something regrettable or even dangerous. Jared's disturbing behavior also started showing this strange obsession with lucid dreams and his increasingly stronger opinions on religion, politics, and society. In November 2010, Jared started sharing his thoughts on some of these subjects with strange YouTube videos.
Anyway, you can totally see in Jared's video just how strange his behavior was, and it kept getting worse until it became extremely aggressive and even dangerous. So according to Jared's friends, he felt a really strong hatred for US Representative Gabby Giffords. The hate supposedly started one time when Jared attended a public event that Giffords held, where he asked her one cryptic question. What is government if words have no meaning? Gifford failed to answer Jared's question because, well, it didn't make any sense, and Jared started to hate her badly. He even kept a document he had been given at the event and wrote concerning messages in it, including the threatening phrase, plans have been made. Scary. Fast forward to January 9th, 2011, Gifford was holding a gathering in the parking lot of a grocery store in Arizona when Jared arrived, walked right up to her, and fired his gun to her head. Then he turned around and started firing into the crowd. That day, Jared took the lives of six innocent people, including a nine-year-old girl, and he injured 13 others. Giffords, however, miraculously survived. After his arrest, Jared was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. He was sentenced to life plus 140 years in prison. But one of the more haunting images of this whole crime was his mugshot, where he clearly looks like he doesn't regret his actions in the slightest. Seeing these three cases got me thinking, what was going on in the minds of these people? Did something snap and cause them to do what they did, or are they just wired differently? From my perspective, I think that Trey was going through a mental illness crisis, and that's why he took the lives of his family. Even more so because in the end, he did show remorse, so he clearly knew that what he was doing was wrong. Not that it justifies it or makes things any less terrible, but in the cases of Anthony and Jared, I do believe that these two YouTubers had no notion of good and evil. And the scariest part of all of this is that there's a huge number of channels out there. Is there a chance that there are more YouTubers brewing crazy and terrible ideas like this? I don't even want to think about it. Anyway, I love to hear your thoughts about these three cases. Please let me know in the comments down below.